Hey guys, you thought you didn't have to see my ugly face for a while, but I'm here again because the Peruvian legend Julio Granda has destroyed Anish Giri in a game in the Bundesliga, kicking him out from the top 10 in the world. It reminds me to one of those games uh, from Petrosian because there has been an amazing exchange sacrifice uh, by the Peruvian player, and it's not the first time. It's not the first time. Uh, the, where uh, Julio beats Anish a few years ago he uh, knocked him out from the World Cup as well so Anish Giri uh, it's having troubles to face the, uh, the uh, Peruvian player Julio Granda who is again closer and closer to 2700 with 50 years old so amazing performance by, by Julio so yes I think again it's good to, call the bullsh to cut the bullshit and start analyzing what happens in the 64 squares and not so often Anish Giri loses with White, so guys pay attention because this game is extremely interesting. So Knight F3 by uh, Anish Giri and Knight F6 by Julio Granda was played. G3 uh, aiming to go for the Fianchetto type of structures. D5 occupying the center, Bishop G2 and C6. And we are in uh, some sort of slav defense. And C4 was played by Anish Giri. And now bishop g4. Normally it's interesting to put this bishop out, out of this pawn chain once the pawn is on e6. Because if you let him in c8, then there won't be so many open diagonals for this bishop, right? So that's why people normally uh, put this bishop out of this pawn chain. Now Anish uh, replies with knight e5. It's a typical reaction, attacking this bishop, open, opening this diagonal for the monster. And bishop e6. And... Uh, some of you would say, oh, this well, is a bit strange, right? Because the natural development of the bishop from f8 is by e7 or d6. But the thing is, after knight e5, you play the natural move bishop f5. There can be some troubles in this diagonal. Let's say after c takes d5, c takes e5, knight c3, increasing the pressure of d5. And then after the natural e6, there is a beautiful move that actually has been played in, uh, uh, in many games. And it's the move g4. Right? Because if you take everything now on g4, after knight takes, knight takes, bishop takes, that is the move, boom, queen a4, just winning this guy on, on g4 and winning the game, right? So, black has to go back to g6 and now the natural uh, reaction h4, forcing black to play h5 at some point. And if black has to play h5 or h6, then you can just take on g6 and you break uh, black pawn structure and destroy his, uh, his king side. So, uh, let's say after bishop d6, d4, now h5 is a threat. Um, white is, uh, I would say, a bit, I would say much better in this position. So, after bishop e6 uh, by Julio Granda, now his intentions are uh, to develop this bishop via g7 and then go short castle, knight bd7, and put some pressure on this uh, e5 knight. And at this point, uh, Anish Giri goes for one secondary line again. The, 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 the main move here is c takes d5 and now after bishop takes d5 now the white move is not taking on d5 of course but instead retreating with this knight to f3 with the idea of going knight f3 kicking this bishop back of course now black can play c5 in order to reply after knight c3 bishop c6 keeping this bishop in the, uh, the best diagonal yeah, and this is another story because as I told you in the game Anish Giri decided to go for d4 uh, on the other hand, it's actually a really natural move, just uh, occupying the center, defending the, the knight on e5. If black takes on c4, you can just play knight a3, and then the next move you are going to recapture this Carlito spawn, right? And then uh, white is going to enjoy a beautiful center here. So after d4, uh, Julio Granda played knight bd7, increasing the pressure of uh, this knight on e5. And now almost a novelty by Anish Giri, knight a3, because... Uh, this was uh, just played by uh, a player of 2000 elo points so could be considered uh, almost a novelty uh, and definitely a novelty in the, in the in the top in the top in chess in top chess so uh, at this point julio plays g6 continuing development on the king side if you try to take uh, already on e5 then after d takes e5 knight d7 c takes c takes and for example facundo f4 now uh, i think white enjoys a, a nice position there is pressure on d5 there is a nice blockade later with a knight on d4 for example and then you have a lot of space in the center so this is actually interesting for white so after knight e3 julio goes for g6 now short castle Bishop g7 and c takes d5 by Anish Giri. The idea could be after c takes d5 that 
could be seen as the natural move here. You can play knight d3. One of the ideas is just to go knight f4, and then this bishop cannot be moved actually from uh, from e6 because the d5 pawn would be hanging. But not only that, you can try to develop your pieces by f4, for example, then occupy the c file. This is another story. The position is almost equal. Black can play actually, for example, bishop f5. But maybe this was Anish idea, Anish's idea. Instead, Julio took with the bishop on d5. And now Anish replies with a really natural move, f3. Uh, avoiding this exchange of bishops and aiming to go for e4, asking this bishop where he wants to go. Actually could be in some sort of troubles because the only available square for these guys is 6, right? But uh, at this point, Julio uh, plays in a prophylactic way, avoiding all these ideas. And he goes for queen b6. Now asking this king some questions, because if you go now e4, of course you can take on e5, and then after e takes uh, e takes e5, knight takes e5, and there is a ping here. So black is going to enjoy a pawn up, and then position, position is much, much better for, for, for white. And he's placed the most natural move, so he just uh, removes this king from, to h1, and then uh, starts uh, preparing this e4 advance, right? Uh, the other interesting move here is knight e c4. Uh, removing this queen from this diagonal, let's say after queen a6, you can play just b3, and then maybe you can uh, play e4 in the next move. So this is uh, uh, pretty interesting as well. But king h1 is, uh, is a natural move here, right? So king h1 was played, and rook d8 uh, again by Julio Granda. Again, the, uh, putting the, this uh, rook in the same file uh, as the, this queen e4 was played and bishop e6 and now black is threatening to take on e5 so white has to do something about this and it's not that simple to remove this queen from this file right because uh, queen e2 then the d4 pawn is hanging so you cannot do that actually so the only interesting way to 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 to, to parry the threat of knight takes e5 is actually knight e c4 right uh, removing this queen from this diagonal and from the pressure of the d4 pawn and uh, queen e6 was played by uh, Julio Grandis, the only sensible move, because if you go queen c7, then this guy is gonna be, it's gonna come to f4, you're gonna have to bring your queen to c8, and your ass is so tight there that you cannot even move. So queen e6 was played, uh, putting some pressure on the c4 knight, and knight e3. This knight has come to e3, so f3, e5, c4, and e3, and it's actually a really interesting square, because Black actually uh, can never uh, strike in the center with c5. You can always reply it with d5, right? Julio plays knight c5. Really interesting move, given the fact that there is a ping here. And the idea is just to go knight d3 uh, with the intention to win the bishop pair, right? Because the bishop cannot be moved to d2 later because the b2 pawn is going to be hanging. So at this point, uh, Anish has several options. So the, the most uh, calm move is knight a c2. And let's say after knight d3, black, uh, white could actually play queen e2. And then the engine suggests uh, knight c5, and this end game could be considered a bit better for white, right? Because you enjoy nice uh, space, space advantage. But instead, Anish decides to complicate the game with e5 here, that concedes the d5 square, but on the other hand, actually starts preparing for a huge attack on the king side. So knight d5 was played, and now d takes e5 is actually not possible because of knight takes e3. Instead, uh, Anish took on d5, and the only first move here is rook takes d5, or the wife's d takes takes e5 is going to win the piece so rook takes d5 f4 attacking this rook on d5 and at this point julio starts playing like uh, like a god uh, i would say here the engine suggests uh, rook d8 natural move and the position is extremely unclear let's say knight c2 h5 for example but instead uh, julio decides to sacrifice the exchange in the petrosian style and he plays knight d3 and uh, so we reach this position after bishop takes d5 and king g1. Of course, white enjoys an exchange up, but this bishop is stronger than a sandwich of wasabi, right? This, this guy here is a semi-god that has come from the future to, to donate pleasure in the light squares, right? And the thing is not that simple to, to suggest a plan for white, because I would love to remove this knight from d3. I cannot play rook f3 and then... And if queen e2, that uh, when I was um, analyzing this game, I was thinking, what happens if queen e2 here? Uh, sorry, uh, king g1, short castle here. And then uh, white's to move. What happens if uh, white plays uh, uh, queen e2? And then I want to play rook d1, etc, etc. But then I realized that there is a huge boom here. What's the move, guys, here? I'm sure you have seen it at home already. So the move is... <laughs> Da, 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 da
Knight f4, and if queen a6, then boom, checkmate with tomato. Knight a3, just winning the game on the spot. This is uh, an amazing finish, right? So after Shock Castle, there's actually not an easy way to, to, to kick uh, 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 active, uh, black active pieces, right? You cannot move the bishop, so the only uh, piece that is actually far, 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 far from the action, sorry guys, my pronunciation. Oh, my man. It's this knight that is on a3, it's in the corner, you actually can bring into the action. So knight c2 was played, and Julio plays rook d8. With the idea of striking in the center with c5, and then this queen could have some troubles, right? And b3 was played, f5. Facundo comes into the action. The idea, what is the idea? Well, uh, now if you uh, now you have a nice square here on e4 for the bishop, where he is actually defended, and then you could actually strike in the center with c5. So this f5 is actually extremely interesting. Then Jin was suggesting here knight takes c1. The idea is if you take with the rook, then a2 is hanging. If you take the, with the queen, you can invade uh, white's position by playing queen d3 with the idea of going queen e4 and then start, to, start looking with beautiful eyes to your opponent. But after knight e3, queen takes d4, rook d1, queen b6, the jean says it's a bit better for white, but I think from the practical point of view, is this is much easier to play with black, right? So b3, f5, and Anish Giri plays bishop a3, attacking the e7 pawn. And now another extremely beautiful move, uh, prophylactic move by Julio Granda. He didn't play king f7, he didn't play a6, because this allows bishop d6, right? And instead he plays bishop e4. And the idea is now, if you take on e7, there is a huge boom again, and this is the beautiful and amazing move, is rook takes d4. And after knight takes d4, you play queen b6, and with these three pieces, you're gonna kill black uh, white's position, right? Because now, queen takes d4 is uh, a move to come. This king hasn't got a proper square to escape. The only move is rook f2, queen takes d d4, queen f1, and now the beautiful and simple move and humble move, knight takes f2, given the fact that this rook is hanging on a1. So after bishop e4, e7 is poisoned, so black played, uh, sorry, white played uh, queen d2, c5, striking in the center already, and after d takes c5, Julio plays g5. Another beautiful move, with the idea of just opening this g file, after g takes f4, and then g takes f4, there's a Simple plan related to bring the skin to bring in the skin to h8 and bring rook g8 and there is actually no proper square to escape to this uh, white skin. So Anish took on g5 and Julio took on e5. There was a beautiful move rook d5 here with the idea of uh, playing knight e5, but uh, this was even stronger as engine suggests. But Julio took on e5. This is actually a really natural move attacking the rook on a1. And uh, after rook a d1, again, rook d5 was extremely interesting. The, one of the ideas just to play knight f4, right, in all these positions. And let's say after queen e3, queen g6. There are so many threats here for black. Uh, for, for black. Let's, let's uh, see, for example, what happens if white just uh, defends the c5 pawn. Well, there is a huge blow here again. There's bishop g3. A lot of amazing tactics are uh, happening here. If you take with the pawn on g3, then queen h5 is just winning the game because this king can never escape. And if you take with the queen, then who solves all the time your problems? Your girlfriend? No. Your mom? Yeah, many times. Your friends? Yeah, but Facundo always comes and helps. And after f4, rook g5, actually white has to resign. So after queen uh, rook d1, rook d5 was really stronger, but Julio instead played um, queen g6 it's a really natural move again it's also strong but uh, anish plays uh, queen e3 here at this point and again rook d5 was really strong but julio plays in a more a human way he plays a6 if the g file is open white is gonna suffer some uh, sort of f4 that is gonna kill him right if g takes e h6 f4 can come in, in, in that position. So uh, Anish Giri tries to 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 keep block this this file, this g file, right, by playing bishop c1. And after h takes g5, he can take with the queen on g5. And then uh, of course he's still an exchange up, and then the queens uh, are off the board, then he can survive, and maybe he, he can even better, he can be even better, right? And Julio again plays a really uh, humble but um, but uh, amazing plan. King h7 just uh, wants to 
to bring a rook to, to, to the g file at some point and increase the pressure. And at this point, Anish Kiddy collapses and plays h4, but on the other hand, it's a really natural move, right? Just uh, 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 the idea with blocking the g file. Julio takes on g on g5, and after queen takes g5, a really good move by Julio is rook g8. The idea is very simple. You just want to play queen f7, and then when this queen is uh, removed from there, just take on g3. It's never easy to find a move here for white. If you take uh, on e7, then just a humble rook g7 just wins on the spot. And then if you take on g6, just rook takes g6, and then you cannot stop uh, this rook takes uh, g3, right? It's, uh, there's, not, there's no a way to defend this guy in g3. So after rook g8, rook d3 was played by Anish Giri in a desperate way. Bishop takes c3 and uh, rook e1, attacking the e5 bishop and an another... Beautiful move from Julio, bishop f6, forcing the trade of queens. If the queen uh, is retreated, you can just take on g3. Rook takes g6, rook takes g6, and now there's no way, no uh, proper way of defending the g3 pawn because the c2 knight is attacked. So knight b4 and bishop e4 was played. And still, bishop f4 is not possible because of bishop c3. So rook e2 was played, and now a5, h5 was played. Rook g3, king h2, and the last beautiful move, bishop e5. This knight is stuck, this rook is defended. When this knight is uh, moved, let's say, to c2, for example, there are uh, thousands discovered checks where uh, black can win material. So, amazing game by a Peruvian player Julio Granda. I think I never saw Anish Giri losing in this way uh, with white in the recent years so it's not in his best shape and he's out of the top 10 now so he's he's got to come back if he wants to keep uh, the all the invitations to the top tournaments so congrats to my to my friend uh, julio and i hope you guys enjoyed the, this game i think the exchange sacrifice is one of the best i've ever seen i mean the last years so hope you guys enjoyed the game just take care see you Bye-bye. Be good.